there's a Brazilian way of venture capital investing that uh, Mobile Group innovated by rewriting the rules of venture capital investing. Rather than having companies pitch to it, Mobile proactively uses a very focused acquisition strategy. Mobile builds an ecosystem of startups that benefit from each other's strengths and borrow each other's executives. It often hires from a common pool of pre-screened, diverse candidates, and it shares a common culture focused on innovating quickly and taking the risk out of failure. In 2006, Eduardo Enrique co-founded Mobile, an Asperger's Group company. He currently is working as the CEO, Chief Executive Officer of Wavy, a mobile group company in SMS messaging, chatbots, and customer experience with the goal of empowering clients to create valuable experiences to people through technology. Eduardo lived in Silicon Valley from 2012 to 2017 when he transferred to Miami to expand Mobile's operations on the East Coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, Eduardo Enrique is with us today at Aquí y Ahora, podcast created by PAG Law, specialist in venture capital operating across the hemisphere. Aquí y Ahora, we leave with you Eduardo Enrique and Juan Paulo Capello, the founding partner of PAG Law. Welcome to both of them and to all of you. Hey, Eduardo, thanks for joining us. No, it's a, it's a pleasure, JP. Very good to, to speak with you here. Well, it's even good to see you on the video chat, though, on the podcast. Don't worry, my dad likes to say I have a face made for the radio. So, um, we just record the audio. Yeah, good, good. likewise. Yeah. I like what I think. Yeah, after after two plus months in quarantine, we all uh, we all need uh, you know a little hair and makeup. Hey, so I'm I'm actually super excited to um, to chat with you because you're one of the few um, entrepreneurs that I know from Latin America who's you know built a great business or a number of great businesses in their home country and obviously in your case and the big prize of Brazil. Then you went to Silicon Valley. Um, you did great things there. I actually read a few of your, or an interview of yours at uh, Bay Brazilians or Brazilian. Yeah, yeah, I think that, yeah, you know, um, which is cool. There's a whole community of Brazilians there supporting each other. Um, and then you moved to South Florida a couple of years ago. Um, so how's it been? I mean, you know, but do, do, let's talk about, you know, the sort of the here and the now. How's your transition to South Florida been? And, you know, happy to compare and contrast hearing about the transition to uh, Silicon Valley. Great. So so we started the company, JP, back in 2000. I think it was before 2000. And, and I would say, one second, you're being very humble. I would say you started writing history <laughs> no. before 2000. Estás escribiendo historia. We are just beginning, so we consider ourselves <laughs> a So we are just starting and learning and beginning. But but we started this this company uh, called Movili back in, in, in two thousand, and then at that time we were uh, uh, basically a content aggregator, uh, helping mobile carriers to monetize content. Right. And we grew a lot. Uh, we expanded to all Latin America uh, via M and A, and 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 also organically. Um, and in 2010 and 11, when the smartphones start growing exponentially in Latin America, especially the Androids, right. um, and saw the app stores, the, the Apple Store and the, the, the Google Play as a kind of a threat because we were selling content through, through feature phones and, and a new disruption is, is happening with the smartphones, we saw that we would die. Basically, this oh, was wow. the, the, the big motivation in, in reinventing the company. So... Uh, we start doing some experiments with entrepreneurs in new in new areas that we were not good. Basically, uh, businesses that were 
uh, starting from zero in, in the app space. And mm -hmm. also in parallel, uh, we decided to send one of the founders, one of the, 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 the entrepreneurs uh, of our team to Silicon Valley to see what was going on with Apple, Google, Facebook uh, uh, there. So that was the big motivation to go to Silicon Valley to start helping us to reinvent the company and enter in wow. the smartphone era. Um, and then we, we spent the whole year of 2012 trying to launch new apps and experiments, and we failed miserably in all of them. <laughs> uh, I remember probably we launched more than 20 projects. Wow. And, and the good news was that we started learning about the Lean Startup methodology and how you fail fast, but you learn from your mistakes. Right. And we started moving faster and launching new experiments faster. And in, in early 2013, we created an app with videos for kids. That was the first draft for Play Kids that became wow. one of our companies. And then we right. grew a lot Play Kids to more than 100 countries. Today, Play Kids has more than 15 million monthly active users. And, and this was a big, big journey because it helped us a lot to be closer from Apple, closer from Facebook, closer from Google. Uh, to, to spread Play Kids globally. And, um, and then in 2016, I, we made a, a merge with Play Kids and with a, a, another startup. And uh, the CEO and, and, and I, we decided to leave Play Kids to come back to Movely Holding, to the group mm -hmm. yep. organization, to help and support other businesses like iFood or Simpla that was selling tickets, we were starting our payments uh, or our fintech strategy. So we, we came back to the holding and start looking at uh, uh, all our businesses. And then the time zone, the distance from Silicon Valley with no direct flights to Sao Paulo. Right. Uh, very difficult and tough for me to work. Right. Uh, our structure was very small in, in, in Silicon Valley. Most of our teams are in Latin America. So I, I decided to make an experiment. As everything we do in the company, we made an experiment. Let's open an, a small office in Miami. Uh, and, and, and then we did it and, and it worked very well. So my impact in the, in the group uh, grew. Uh, I, I, we, we saw an opportunity for me to run Wavy. Uh, even be, from Miami and the whole team is in Latin America, but... I, I thought that was possible, and it's been successful. So, so that's why I, I arrived here in Miami. Uh, no, that's amazing. Um, what I'm super interested in, and I mean, Mobile, you know, I wasn't joking when I said, you know, an escrito historia, um, because you know, it, it's such from for as a, from an outsider who's had you know the pleasure of of um, you know. Uh, having intense conversations about what you guys are doing with, you know, supporters and big fans like Veronica Serra. Um, it really is always interesting how such innovative ideas come out of Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, in the intro, we say that, you know, you guys are rewriting the rules of VC investing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'd, I'd be super interested in hearing that evolution because, you know, you, in my mind, you sort of had three kinds of players um, in the venture space. You know, you had the entrepreneurs building companies, you had um, VCs investing in companies, and then, you know, thanks to Rocket Internet and a few other players, you had this sort of company builder, venture builder kind of model. Some would have been more successful than others, like Mount Nazca, Navca, Mountain Partners. Mountain Partners started in LATAM as a company builder, became more of a traditional investor, et cetera. But you guys have taken sort of a different path, right? With your acquisitions and, as you said, sort of rotating executives into companies. So let's talk about that because, you know, it's almost like, you know, unicorns didn't exist in Latin America and now they do. Um, it's, it's almost like Mobile's kind of business model didn't exist. You guys have invented it. Um, and I keep waiting for other people to start trying to, you know, copy it a little bit. So yeah, let's let's talk. About how did that How did that happen? Uh, I think we started this model uh, as a, a need 
to survive because <laughs> we had a cash call. We had a cash call uh, that was right. our content business with the mobile carriers. And okay. this cash, cash call uh, was sentenced to die. Uh, was, this in, was this in the late 2000s? Is, you know, when, when did you guys begin to pivot um, into your sort of current strategy? Or I, test? Think, I think it was uh, 2010, 2011. I, think, I would say 2010. Okay. When we saw the smartphones uh, uh, apps coming. And, and then we are kind of uh, we, we have a big dream uh, uh, jp uh, uh, if you go if you visit our offices you see our vision uh, 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 that is to improve 1 billion lives with our apps right. so it's a it's a big vision it's a big dream and we are not here to to create a, a, a cool company for 5 or 10 years we are here to 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 create a big company that will last for a long time and, and to be global and, 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 and to really impact people. So when we saw the need to, to reinvent ourselves, we start diversifying. Uh, and and o- another interesting fact was that because we have a, big, a very big vision and big ambitions, we always had many, many uh, products. So we learn how to, to be diversified. So this right. was very important in our DNA since the beginning to become a big company in in, in mobile content back in, uh, in Brazil. Right. Uh, we had to diversify. So um, oh, that that's interesting. Sorry to interrupt, but that reminds me. You know, I was quite involved at, at that time in the sort of mid two thousands in the um, video game space. Yeah, and it was almost the same thing. You needed to have a studio. I mean, I think you know, Angry Birds was. You know, I don't know, Title 79 that that studio released. And, um, you know, I was involved um, at uh, at uh, Three Melons. I was their lawyer. Um, and, yeah, they had this game, Bola, but they had launched a whole bunch of games. And I guess what you're saying is you guys were sort of viewed yourself a bit like that studio model where you were just launching yeah, we were launching many many technologies to to basically to sell content. So we had video content, we had SMS, we had ringtones. So we learned how to diversify, and and then when we 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 also always had we always were paranoid to survive. So afraid to how, how can we create new bets that will help us to reinvent the company and last for more years, right? So, so when we, we saw this coming in 2010, we said, let's try many experiments. And from these experiments, we, you, you guys like, uh, uh, and I'm happy with this, but you, you always say, oh, you, you do great things and amazing creative things. But what you don't know is that 90% of our ideas fail miserably. <laughs> <laughs> but they fail so in private. That, that, that is the, the real story. So uh, uh, we made... I, I would say Fabricio and Arthur and, and, and I, we, we probably explored the ideas, uh, I don't know, 30 ideas to invest in a company. And then we saw that very small food delivery company called iFood right. that in 2013 was doing 93% of their orders via desktop. Wow. And this uh, and Fabrizio said, oh, that, that that's interesting. That's a use case that will go to mobile." Fabrizio was v- visionary on, on this. But let's do an experiment. But what you probably you don't know, we made experiments of a partnership with a gaming companies. With uh, I don't know, uh, I don't remember if we did dating, but we we explored many ideas, and the best ideas based on data and based on the results of our experiments that that last right so ifood was successful play kids was successful after 20 30 experiments so and and it's so interesting what you say because um, i see so many entrepreneurs if from latin america and they're not data driven you know, and so they're they're able to raise their sort of seed round, sometimes a small A round, but then 
you know, when they're looking to raise in real institutional capital, you know, whatever, from a Monashis, an Ebrix, a Valor, whoever, a Kasek, you know, those funds to support a, you know, a significant valuation, I've been at those meetings that are sometimes awkward where the fund's like, okay, show us your metrics. And, you know, they come out with some, and then they're like, okay, you know, show us your KPIs, uh, 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 you know, that sort of, and then it's, Show, show us the data that you've been using to make decisions. Silence, crickets, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, how have, how have you guys, obviously you've, you know, you've, with that lean startup mentality, you've learned to, if 90%, I mean, the good news is if 90% of your ideas are failing, which is, you know, um, not an unusual percentage, I mean, I sometimes feel 100% of my ideas fail. <laughs> um, you know, how do you, how, how, the important thing there is to fail fast, right? To realize quickly that that's a dead end road and go on to the next one. You know, what, what kind of metrics, how do you build that in? What kind of analytics are you using? Um, what are sort of the uh, tools of the trade? Uh, that, that, that's a good question. And I would I would like to comment about culture, about uh, about bootstrapping in the beginning, mm. and and about our concept of jet ski. So oh, let's just start. Let's just start with the the, the, the bootstrapping. Uh -huh. We are entrepreneurs. I, I, I'm starting to consider myself as dinosaurs because now <laughs> I'm 43. I'm getting old. I'm 53, so take it easy. So, <laughs> so uh, and, and probably this is my fourth big crisis. So wow. I was born in the, the millennial bug and the, the internet bubble. So we started, we started a company in 2000, uh, before 2000. So um, uh, 2002, we had a big crisis in Brazil, 2007 and eight, of course, and now a, a big one. So I'm getting old. <laughs> uh, but when we started a company, we had to bootstrap since the day zero and understanding with data what we were doing and the, the return on what we were doing was very important to survive. So we never had in the beginning a lot of money to simply burn money like crazy and, and do cute things. We had to do things that bring value to people and to the business to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. This was also very important in our DNA, and this became part of our culture. So uh, you, we have a culture that, first of all, we, we face the brutal facts all the time with data. So we never, uh, 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 we never uh, have fear to present data with a big problem or, or something that is, is not doing well because this is a tool for us to rebuild right. and do again. So if we do this fast and cheap, we create a learning machine. So being data-driven is a tool for us to be selective on what is working well, what we can fix and what we are fixing between what is, is a mistake and it, it, it's and wrong. Right. And but so many projects, as you know, it's that fine line, right? That it's easy to kill everything. But a lot of times, you know, it's it just needs a little twist, a little secret sauce. I mean, you know, Uber wasn't their first ride sharing app. Facebook wasn't the first social network. Mm -hmm. How do you because that's been actually one of my problems. How do you, you know, continue to invest and tweak, 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 tweak? Or, you know, cut it because nothing feels worse. And, you know, I have a company builder here in Miami. Nothing feels worse when you kill a project and then a year or two later, somebody basically launches the same thing, but they, you know, they change the pricing or they just give it one little twist and it's successful. Yeah, sometimes it happens. <laughs> and you have to accept. Right. Sometimes you make a mistake and you, you didn't have the, the, the tweak. But... How we do, okay? Yeah. Another important point of our uh, culture 
And I can't forget to speak about the jet skis. Oh, no, don't worry. But, I wrote it down. I'm not going to let you okay. forget. We're in Miami, so we love jet skis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, uh, the way we do, JP, is we always uh, give goals to our teams that are exponential, always. So we say, listen, my friend, you have to reach 10 million monthly active users in one year. Uh, and you have, you have the, 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 the freedom to decide what to do to, to, to reach the, the goals. But, but please don't, don't do things that is not aligned with our values. So don't, don't do illegal things. Right. But you have to think in an exponential goal. And sometimes people, they, they change, 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 change. And they see that that initiative is not helping them to reach the goal. And we put pressure, say, listen, probably you won't have a bonus if you keep trying things that is not working. So why don't you change the approach? Why don't you launch an, a dif different thing? Sometimes it, it, a little detail miss it and you, you, you couldn't reach your goals. But doing this systematically, giving um, very ambitious goals, very aggressive goals, exponential goals, and being brutally honest and result-driven, in general, in long term, you select the ideas with potential with the ideas that are not scaling. And then you create the machine. Right. So you need a lot of discipline. And between us, the Asians are more disciplined than the Latinos. Nice. But we, we, this is something I think is different at Mo, uh, Movili and Wavy that we are very disciplined in our management model. That was inspired by a B in Bev. So we we basically oh, okay. we were very inspired by the the management model of InBev to result meetings uh, every month and uh, KPIs. All this information is open to everyone. You can see the balance scorecard. So that, that that's that's the behind the scenes of our well, how how we run the company. The jet ski. The jet ski. Uh, the jet skis are are. Uh, an illustration on how how we operate uh, uh, sometimes in uh, uh, balancing the cash calls mm -hmm. and the innovation projects. So imagine that uh, Movili uh, or, or or Wavy, we have the big boat. So I will talk about Wavy. Mm -hmm. We have the big boat that is the bigger business. For example, Wavy is the the one of the largest uh, uh, SMS provider to enterprises in Latin America. So basically, we help companies to send text messages to their clients, helping them to connect to all the carriers. Got it. And, and this is the cash call. This is a 20, 20 something years old business. And, and, and it's very easy to predict what is happening uh, and not very, not much space for innovation. So this is the big boat, the, the transatlantic or the, the, the big boat. But also wavy, we had the jet skis that that they we put the jet skis down on the water, mm -hmm. they go there, make an experiment and come back. For example, right. three years ago, we opened the the enterprises connections with the WhatsApp API. So Wavy start doing jet skis on what could we do with WhatsApp? Uh. And now we, we 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 start investing in bots. We start investing in uh, how we build these conversations and helping companies to build these conversations. So now this conversational area inside Wavy that was born with a jet ski of experimentations, with <laughs> experimentations, right. is now an important part of our future. It's an important part of our revenue. It's an important part of our future. And, and now we have a, like 50 people working on this new area. It's more mature. But this is, was born with a jet ski, an experiment. So you, you have to be ambidextrous. So if you read uh, Christensen from Harvard, uh, you will understand why big companies die. Right. Because they don't have the ability to be a transatlantic, a big boat, but also put jet skis on the water to experiment new things. That maybe the jet ski will be upgraded to a fast boat, and then one day can be another transatlantic, another big boat. 
Actually, I'm, I'm happy you mentioned uh, Christian. His one of his uh, partners in one of his books, uh, Patty Hall, who's a big supporter of Endeavor, was, was just on the uh, podcast. But I want to get back to that point. It's it's super interesting to me because, um, as you know, one of the problems that um, larger companies have is it's very hard for them to innovate, right? Um, you you use this example of the jet skis, and I love that analogy. The problem is in most companies, there's the antiquerpos, the antibodies, that as soon as somebody leaves on a jet ski, I don't know, gets the water cannon and tries to blow them out of the water because they're almost afraid what the person on the jet ski is going to bring back, right? Because and innovation is ultimately a threat to the status quo. And most bigger companies, successful companies like Wavy or even Mobile, there's a culture of trying to cling and protect what they have rather than open innovation. So how do you keep the anticuerpos from you know, shooting the jet skis on the way out or on the way back? I don't know. I think it's a survival mode again. The, 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 the answer is surviving. <laughs> uh, we, in technology, mm -hmm. the speed that innovation, wa innovation waves comes and as a tsunami is unbelievable and it's getting faster. Right. If you are not paranoid to reinvent your business every month, every quarter, every week, you probably will not be in the market in a few years. Wow. So we always, when we establish our goals, we always have a strong uh, uh, focus in having uh, completely disruptive projects. So th this, this, again, is part of our culture of being paranoid that an innovation wave is coming and can destroy us. Let's, let's surf this new wave. Let's find a, a, a way to, to understand and explore this opportunity, even if this will kill our cash call today. So you, I, I can tell you tons of examples inside the, the Movity group. It's so interesting, and, and I, I'm really happy we're having this conversation because I feel more and more I understand what, you're, what you've built. I mean, it's almost like you've built a machine, a process, more than a specific company. You've built a process to build companies that continue to iterate and innovate rather than, you know, we built a whatever, a fintech, we built a, you know, SMS company. No, what you're really building is a culture of, um, you know, reinvention. Reinvention. And yeah. that actually makes sense because the other thing I've noticed, and I mean, you're an example of that, but I've, I've known people who, they're working within the mobile group of companies. So they work at one company for a bit and then it's almost like, you know, I don't know, it's like a sports league, like, you know, then they get recruited for one of the other teams and then they go to one of the other teams. And so that, I guess, you know, the way you guys really measure yourself is how effective you are in terms of building and rebuilding companies, right? Exactly. So uh, I can tell more about this because this is the, uh, another important uh, element. Uh, we are an ecosystem. Mm. So the value in the ecosystem is the capacity of the companies to collaborate and create a, a network effect between, between uh, each other. So I can tell you tons of examples of these collaborations. Uh, Wavy using WhatsApp having iFood as one of the, 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 the first clients. Right. This is a big example of collaboration. Uh, PlayKids also was our first client on Apple Business Chat. So Apple launched the, the API for the, the, the iMessage. Right. It's called Apple Business Chat. We launched the first project in the world that is global because of PlayKids. Wow. PlayKids has a global footprint. And, and they were our lab for this innovation so having this ecosystem with companies that collaborate is super important and having the talents that can help each company in depending on on what is the maturity and the the needs of the company it's super super important 
So giving you an example, uh, my product director today at Wavy uh, used to work for our tickets company. Uh, my engineering director was in the content business, then went to the tickets business, then went to iFood, and then came back to Wavy. Wow. Uh, so you heard about these stories all the time. Flavio Steca. Flavio Steca today is the CTO of iFood, but he's the former uh, CEO of Play Kids, and wow. he was the former CTO of the group. So amazing examples how you uh, allocate talents depending on the needs of, of each company. And this is super powerful because you have you, you spread the same culture, the same values, and the same methodology, what you said about you, you have these processes. So it's about culture and, and the discipline on the, on the management model that creates this machine. And in terms of um, outside investors in specific companies that are part of the Movile group, uh, depending on the on the business and the maturity and the, and what is good for the business, uh, our shareholders are open to, to new investors. So um, uh, we have Innova Capital from mm -hmm. Veronica as, as an important right. shareholder in the in the Movil, in the group and 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 Prozus, right? The the Nasper's Prozus, right? And and in some businesses, they they are always open to new plans. So it's all about uh, 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 dreaming big, having a solid plan. I'll, I'll give you another example on Wavy. I just made a merge mm -hmm. with a global tech group uh, called Cinch. Mm -hmm. uh, they they are kind of the same business, but they are they have more presence in the U.S. Uh, and Europe. We are leaders in Latin America, so we merge it. So now. Movly is a shareholder, will be, we are under the, the regulatory approval, but will be a shareholder of Cinch. And yeah, so it's our new partner, a Swedish group. Got it. Built a global, a global leader, a global, a global company. So again, we are always open to ideas and big plans. If the plan is big, solid, uh, brings value, and help with the vision to improve one billion's life, we are happy to analyze. And how do you guys, I mean, it's it's amazing. Um, and I'm just thinking of, you know, so many um, companies that could, you know, benefit with this kind of methodology. How do you maintain a sort of, um, I don't know if, it, well, my question, I guess, is in terms of decision-making, um, you know, um, it, it, unless you guys have, you know, a computer you can put the data into and make decisions, obviously um, you need some sort of central decision-making. Um, how do you, you know, balance the sort of central decision-making with the agility that's required to run all these experiments almost on a, you know, real-time basis? Uh, we, we have the, the guidelines and the and the process, but we love to decentralize the decision making and the planning. So we help the companies with the planning as advisors, as mentors, uh, with money to help to raise money. Uh, but the CEOs they they run the company, they have the autonomy, they build the plans, and we are mentors. We. We have we have monthly meetings, to, including with we have monthly meetings with the CEOs to exchange ideas and and be mentors of each other and and and, and advisors. But but the the decision making is more decentralizing. Right. And what we help a lot is in the planning. So the strategic planning. By the way, we do all together. Every, all the companies together in an offsite. Wow. We have a, a consultant firm that helps uh, uh, help us. Uh, the name is Hartman House. They, they, they are with us for 12 years. So they, they help us since the first edition of the strategic planning. And we do the planning together to really help each other and, and give that big direction, uh, help them to create the exponential uh, goals, uh, advise in some, some ways. But, but the, the, the teams that they run the company, we want to decentralize the, the decision-making. 
It's interesting as I hear you talk about that. I've, I've had the pleasure of, of getting, you know, meeting Ray Dalio from Bridgewater mm -hmm. quite a number of times. And, you know, he's famous for that um, sort of book principles among, you know, lots of other things. Um, but it seems very in line with what you're saying. You know, his point is that if you have principles, you know, every time you make a decision, you run, you need to make a decision. His point, he's trying to make himself irrelevant in the sense that, you know, if you, if you just put every decision through the filter of these principles, you make the right decision, you know, or their data through this filter. Yeah, Dalio, Dalio, what I read from, uh, what I learned from the book is that he system, uh, he created the system. So he put a lot of technology on this. Right. Uh, we are more in the methodology and the culture, right? right? Uh, of course, his culture probably is super fat, super strong. Um, I don't know the company details, but I read the book. And I, by the way, I love it. And, and everybody at, at Movely read the book in, in the, the, the management team. Right. Uh, but I think, I think it is, it is aligned. You are right. So is is again, it's about the discipline in the management model and the culture. So if we speak the same language and, and we think in the same way to dream big, uh, we use M and A uh, uh, with with uh, the help of the the, the the holding. We use this the management model. Uh, we have these guidelines that helps a lot. I think it helps a lot to decrease the chances that the base the business will fail. So and increase the the network effect, the collaboration. Oh, that's amazing. So I, with the time we have left, I, I want to talk a little bit, you know, a little more personally. Um, You've been at this almost as long as I have, or as long. Um, you know, we sold Patagon in 2000, I think just, you know, after um, you guys had, had launched. Um, how do you stay motivated? You know, you guys have accomplished a huge amount. I'm sure, you know, if you had wanted to ride off into the sunset, you could have. Um, and you seem really, I mean, talking to you, it's amazing. I mean, you know, you sound like a guy who just started the marathon not a guy who's, you know, run a lot of marathons over the last 20 years. I mean, how do you stay so excited and focused and, you know, with Wavy being the CEO? Uh, I think, JP, we, we also, we, we, we are builders. Right. Um, and, and we love this, this thing to, to dream big mm. and, and build great things, great companies and great, great teams. And, um, and we, and I think, and I think most of us in the, in the top management of, of Movely, we are here because we love the company. We love the culture. Um, and, and I think we love the idea to, 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 to really have big impact. Um, we, we didn't have also big exits. So, uh, of course we made some money on the, on the journey, but this was by far, what was not by far the, 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 the priority. The priority was to build the, the, the machine. So, uh, and has this, has this quarantine, um, you know, changed, I mean, you seem very excited. I'm sure you're very excited about what you're doing. Has this quarantine changed your sort of outlook? Are you even more excited about writing history? I mean, changing the rules of the game? I'm very sad and worry about the world and how things are, are happening and, and, and how, how the institutions are dealing with it. I'm, I'm really, really worried, especially about uh, Brazil, uh, uh, like uh, poor countries or, or countries under development, um, this this made me think a lot about how could we help, how could we impact, and I was very inspired about uh, the impact of technology uh, in this in this problem, and our responsibility as tech uh, uh, tech people, tech professionals to really solve these problems so 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 really try to help the businesses to pass through the crisis uh, help people to have access to uh, 
uh, buy stuff or or communicate. So it's exciting in one part of us, so part of me, to really believe that technology can help the world to pass through the crisis. On the other hand, is is really it's really sad what we are seeing. Is is and the economic crisis is just beginning. It will be tough. So I'm worried. I, I'm 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 really worried about how how you fix this. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I can tell you on, on my journey about 10 years ago, um, realizing that about 90% of my ideas weren't going to work, um, but never quite sure, you know, which were those 90% of my ideas. Um, I started trying to focus on projects that had, you know, some sort of social impact along with an ability to, to you know, have a strong financial impact. And so, I, you know, I launched um, IdeaMe, which is the largest crowdfunding platform in Latin America, and a number of other projects, um, you know, that have a social impact very broadly defined. I mean, including like a cannabis brand. So, not, you know, when I, when I define, you know, s- impact, it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, bringing water to the poorest people in the world, though, if I can find a good business model to do that, I will. And at least going, going what you said, I began thinking, yeah, how can we use technology? Because what I find sometimes is people um, in the impact space come from a certain mindset, but maybe they aren't the best at adapting technology to the problems. Mm-hmm. Um, have you guys ever thought about anything in that sphere? Or? Yeah, we, are, we are starting this. So we, uh, I think it was last year, we founded uh, uh, some of the founders of Movely. We, we opened a foundation called uh, Fundação Umbi, uh, La, La Fundação Umbi, the Umbi John de Personas. Give me the uh, info and I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, and, and this foundation is, is, uh, has a, a purpose of, of using technology on education. And, and many of our companies, we are helping the foundation to try to start in influencing some entities. For example, Wavy is helping the foundation with chatbots on WhatsApp Easy. to teach people. Uh, uh, we are with a project that is scaling now with uh, about uh, uh, information on, on, on the COVID right. uh, to help people. So we are, we are, we are starting this. Um, the foundation is the, the instrument that we are using and the companies are, are, are supporting the foundation. That's, so, amazing. That's an amazing business model. Yeah. Yeah. So one last question for you, which I can only do in Spanish. I apologize. I'm terrible at uh, translating back and forth. ¿Qué mensaje le quieres pasar a los hinchas del Tecno Latino aquí ahora para que mantengan el optimismo y la fortaleza? In estos momentos difíciles, you can answer in English. Uh, I think, I think we, I, I like a lot the Stockdale paradox. Mm. Uh, Stockdale was a a, a, a military. Uh, he was uh, uh, he was arrested in, in in the war, and and he was tortured, and and every day he had in 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 his mind said that that problem will will be solved he will be uh, released but but he had to face that day with resilience right and it, my my message is uh we have to keep fighting and keep trying and having the resilience to never give up because the solutions will come the crisis will the crisis will pass and new ideas will come uh and and of course, no matter how, how much we will suffer, if you keep fighting and keep believing that the crisis will pass, not with a, 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 a superficial optimism, right. but facing the brutal reality that we have today, we have a serious crisis, we have a problem, but there will be a solution. I think we will we'll adapt and and then we will win. Uh, I. I in addition to the, the Stockdale, I, I love the Darwin theory that it's not the, the richest or the smartest that will survive, but it's the, 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 the species that will adapt faster the most and adapt. better with the environment. So adapt yourself, be resilient that we will find the solutions.
Amigo, I was very excited to get you on this podcast. I'm even more excited to get it out, out on the air. We'll get it out soon. Thank you so much for making the time. It was a pleasure, JP. Let me know if you need anything else. Always, always open here to, to collaborate. Este fue otro programa de Aquí y Ahora, auspiciado por PAG Law, especialista en Venture Capital. Hasta pronto.